Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Server Stack, and today what we're going over is the current starting relay and the operation as well as the troubleshooting. This video is sponsored by our friends over at Danfoss, and we have a link to their free e-lessons down in the description section below. So the current starting relay, uh, this particular one, only has one wire connection on it. So right here you see that it has two connections on the back, and they go into the start and run down on the bottom. Here's a small fractional horsepower compressor. We have a compressor protector up top right here on the common terminal. And just so you know, the uh, terminals of a compressor can be different depending on the compressor. So, so they're not all the same as far as where the common start and run are located at. This one right here, you see it has an M and an S. So these current starting relays are marked for where this is the main, so that's the main winding, so that's the run winding, and then this is the start winding. So if you look right here, this is where your power wire ends up going, and it follows this heavy gauge wire around and then over to here. So if you if you look right here, you see that this says the top, so this will be up. So our power wire comes in here, gets wrapped around, and then it comes out right here to power the run winding. So that's how this works right here, but inside you have a iron core inside. So when you tilt it this way, these connections will actually touch. There is a, the iron core is able to fall down onto the two contacts that are inside and connect the two. If it's like this, they should be not connected. So here I have one already opened up. So this is the back. Each one may be built differently, but this one has two screws that you can get to the inside. Right here is the iron core on the inside, and it'll end up falling down onto those contacts. So if you see, it just fell. I don't know if you can hear this. Okay, so, so from here to here. So this right here, will be just like this, and this is noted M and this is noted S. So that means that this is the start winding right here, and this is your power wire, it comes over to here. This is normally open between here and here, and then you have the wire coming across and going over to the main. Once the compressor draws amperage, what's gonna happen is it's going to suck this iron core up to this these two sets of contacts right here, and it's going to connect them and it's going to apply power to the start winding until the amperage draw goes down, meaning the compressor has already started up and it's running, and then what's gonna happen is it's going to drop that iron core and it's gonna disconnect that start winding. So you're just gonna have your power coming in onto your run winding. So here you have an up close view of the set of contacts inside of a current starting relay, and here you have your iron core. So you have your spring here as well, this uh, rod in the inside is a little bit bent. But basically what it is, is you have this iron core down at the bottom and these two sets of contacts are normally open so they're not connecting the start and run. And then once you draw amperage through this coil, it's going to turn into an electrical magnet. It's gonna suck this, this upwards. It's gonna push on those contacts and it's going to basically make those touch in the inside. So the problem is, a lot of times, is if this is getting hung up, or the big problem is, when you're drawing such a high amperage across these contacts, they tend to burn, you have carbon dust in there, and when they're supposed to close, they end up having a high resistance reading across them instead. Um, and that's just due to the, the pitting right here on the contacts. The other thing is that they could get stuck and welded into the closed position. So that would mean that the start and run would be connected all the time. So that's some of the issues that you could run into with a current starting relay. Now we're gonna run a test on the current starting relay. We're gonna have the power off and then disconnect the, the relay from the compressor. We're gonna turn our multimeter onto resistance and we're gonna check the, the ohms across these two sets of contacts. They should be normally open, which they are, it says OL, so that's open line or over limit. We flip this over and we let gravity push down on the iron core, and you see that we are reading 0.4 ohms of resistance. So that, that is good. See, if I move it around, you see these contacts are not um, touching great, just because that's what's gonna happen every time you test it, if you move this around. 
Uh, but what's going to happen is this electrical magnet is going to suck that iron core upwards, and that's going to help connect those two contacts. When you flip it back over again, the way it's normally supposed to be positioned on the compressor, then you read OL. Another test that could be performed is to check the resistance value of the coil right here. So we'll go ahead and check it. It should be very low, and you see it's reading 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohms of resistance. So that coil is good, and the connection points are good. It shouldn't read OL, and the resistance value should not be high. I want to show you that there's two different versions of these. One is with the coil up top, and one is with the coil down, down low. And so it just depends on what model and manufacturer you're working with. But as you can see, with this coil up, these contacts between the start and the run are open. With the coil down on this one right here, you see that this is normally open. Because if I flip this over, the contact on the bottom will actually connect here to here when I flip it over this way. With this one, if I flip it down like this, you see that the contacts actually touch. So this is made to mount just like this on the compressor. Each compressor is, is different where the, uh, where the taps can be for the common start and run it. So you want to make sure that you're aware of which current starting relay you're working with. This is the inside of a current starting relay with the, the coil up top. You can see that this connection right here is actually burnt. So it's no longer going to be connecting to the compressor terminal. A current starting relay that only has one tap is not used in conjunction with a start capacitor. One that has multiple taps, such as this right here, is used with a start capacitor. So you see your, your input wire here coming over to here, and then when the normally open set of contacts close, it's going to connect from here to here. And then you can have your start capacitor connected in series between here and here. This connection right here will be for your compressor protector. But once again, you always want to make sure that you know how each of these are mounted onto the compressor. The current starting relay should not get confused with the PTC thermistor. And they're usually in a case that looks like this. And here I took the back off of one. You can check out that video I did on them. Uh, just look up the uh, AC Service Tech uh, PTC thermistor. In the inside right here, what happens is as you draw amperage through that little disc, it ends up heating up and then opening so that you are no longer having the, the uh, start and run connected. So you just are supplying power to the run. Used in conjunction with the current starting relay is a compressor protector that may look like this, or one that looks like this. Right here we have our current starting relay, and the back of this is actually broken off, but here's your two taps right here, and here is your compressor protector. And if you're looking for a video on how to determine your common start and run, I have that linked in the description section below, as well as some of the tools I use out in the field. Check out our new refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. We have some review pages so you can see what's in there over at the website, but we have the link down in the description section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.